Hi friends! If you're new here, welcome! In this video, I'm going to be making a history bounding kirtle, as well as a medieval shift. So, both of these garments are made out of linen. Actually, I'm not entirely sure that the kirtle is linen. I know it's a natural fiber, uh, but I did get it dead stock, so it could potentially have some other natural fibers in it, uh, but my best guess is that it's linen, uh, or possibly hemp. So, so, I didn't really have a specific like ethnic group or or small time period for this. I'm going for kind of 14th century, uh, maybe like later 14th century, but really this is more of a history bounding piece for me. Uh, so it's really not meant to be specific to any particular era or time period. The only thing I really did to adapt the kirtle was change the fit to be a tiny bit looser and also bring the hem up to be kind of a high ankle-ish length hem, which is something that I know is very practical and will fit into my life, unlike another floor length skirt. I've made a few floor length skirts at this point, uh, they, they're, they're pretty hard to wear um, if you're trying to like go up and down stairs or not trip over it. Uh, in my personal experience, floor length skirts are not the most practical. So, a high ankle length skirt is amazing. You can basically live your life in it. I can live my life in it. I don't know about you, uh, but pretty much anything other than trying to do a handstand, you can do in a high ankle or kind of mid calf length skirt. For the smock or the shift, the underlayer, uh, it is, as probably most of you already know, but if you don't, it's kind of what is thought to be the, the base layer, the under layer. Usually they would have been made out of white linen, and it's just kind of this big, simple t-shirt dress made out of squares and rectangles and triangles. It's against the body and it gets washed a lot more regularly than the clothes that go on top of it. So I think I want this to be about mid-calf length and have some amount of flare in the in the skirt, uh, but doesn't need a whole lot. It's gonna be, let's draw it out. There we go, you have the basic rectangle and then this triangle will get cut off and added over here.
I cut it out and put it together using linen thread and I think this shift came out pretty well. Although what I would change for the future is that it is a little bit big around the main body area. So I have about five or maybe six inches of ease in the bust, which is a lot. So I'm thinking that in the future I would keep a similar sized neckline, but take the main body in so it has only about two inches of ease. Uh, and I think this would help with, you'll see at the very end, I have a little bit of trouble with the neckline kind of creeping up here out of the, the curdle neckline. And I think that's because the main body was so wide that when it was pushed in, this part of the neckline was pushed uh, a little bit towards the center. So I think if I made it a little bit tighter around the bust and the body, then the neckline would kind of stay in its place more and not have that room to be moving around. That's my theory. Moving on to the kirtle. So for the kirtle, I decided to just go ahead and pattern something on paper flat based off of my measurements to start off with. So I basically just made a body shape. I don't have, uh, I mean, I guess there is a method to it. I didn't really copy any method that I've known, uh, but I pretty much just created the front and the back and I took what I wanted the finished waist bust and hip measurements and my vertical measurements and just kind of created a curved shape that seemed like it would fit on my body. Uh, and for these I used my waist, uh, my hips plus about three inches or something. Uh, that was kind of, that changed a little bit. Uh, and then the bust I did minus about two or three inches because I wanted a little bit of bust support and this ended up not really existing in the final product, uh, but that's what I did. From there, I made a mock-up. First mock-up, probably not gonna do another mock-up. Honestly, fits pretty well. Like I suspected, a little bit too much of a bust curve here. It's kind of hard to tell. Right here, it kind of looks like there's too much room vertically, but I think if I just cut this bust curve out and then uh, cut this a little bit, um, if I wanted these to really sit squarely on my shoulders, I feel like I want to tilt the entire, like cut this in half and tilt the entire thing slightly this way. I think I could scoop out the mid back a little bit. You can see here in my second fitting, I added some seams. These are really quickly and kind of haphazardly done, but I just wanted to take out a little dart shape from the side to change the angle of the whole top, and that seemed to work out well for me. So then my pattern was complete, and I decided to move on to final fabric, which is this gorgeous dark red. Uh, I think I had like a yard and a half or something with how tiny and also how short I am, that ended up being just barely enough. I think I had maybe like this this much fabric left after cutting it out, after cutting everything out. Um, the way that I fit it in was I shortened it to be that kind of high ankle length and I did short sleeves. Um, and then I've seen people cut and pattern kirtles a couple of different ways, but the way that I decided to do it, the way that I thought would work best for my, my fabric shape and just fabric conservation was to do the top part, the top like tank top part, and then from that hip part go straight down rather than coming out at all and adding flair to those individual pieces. I kept all of my body pieces only that width at the hip level. So they all were these long pieces and I could cut them all out right next to each other and then separately I cut out gores to go in between each of those four pieces. So for the gores, two of them were just cut as one piece and then the other two I had to take these side triangle pieces and sew them together to create gores. Those were just the length that I needed and then the width that I had. I didn't really have options as far as how wide to make them. I guess I could have made them narrower but I, I could only make them so wide. So I went with that width and I cut out triangles uh, and there's really nothing special about this. I just made sure that the smaller two that I was going to sew together had about an extra half an inch to allow for that seam allowance so they would all become relatively the same size. And they actually weren't all quite the same size, but it's close enough that overall the garment looks fine and looks relatively symmetrical. Back to the sewing.
I did the construction with linen thread and with silk thread to finish and for the sleeves I haven't talked about sleeve patterning I basically just created a random sleeve pattern uh, flat drafted sort of based on measurements um, it wasn't perfect it wasn't great I ended up actually needing to fix it a lot oh I did make a mock-up I made a mock-up I made a sleeve mock-up and I think I basted it onto my main body to see if it would be okay and I was like, it's good enough, so then I cut it out of the fabric. Um, yeah, it ended up being too long and have too much ease and I kind of, I hemmed it and then I decided it was too long and I like folded it up another time and did like a really like loose running stitch just to, to hold it up and it's still like that, but we're gonna pretend that that's, that's not what happened. Actually, we're not. I'm a human. For the lacing, uh, I didn't have enough fabric to cut out the front pieces with extra fabric to turn under and do the front eyelets or to have reinforcement for the eyelets so what I did was I used strips of a different linen this is just a plain white linen and I just sewed it right sides together and then flipped it to the inside and turned the edge under and stitched that down uh, and then did some eyelets in red silk thread and I only had this fine silk thread I didn't have anything thicker uh, so they actually worked out okay I wasn't sure if I would have to use like an insane number of stitches to keep the eyelets covered to keep that like the inner edge of fabric covered in thread but it was surprisingly okay to use a fine silk thread it worked out I'll also say that as far as fitting I decided to keep the fit a little bit looser because one I wanted this to be more of a history bounding piece I wanted this to fit into my history bounding everyday wardrobe and I don't love wearing things that have a lot of compression in my normal wardrobe like especially on my rib cage I stopped even wearing like sports bras regularly because I just I don't like the compression so I did pattern it with almost zero compression and I don't need a lot of bust support so I didn't have to add the compression there for support needs uh, but I also wanted to be able to wear it potentially over a long sleeve and floor length or, or ankle, lower ankle length uh, kirtle to be more of a historically accurate thing. Not that the length difference is historically accurate, I actually don't think I've seen that, but layering different garments that are similar to this one and similar construction is something that I've seen a lot. I think it's interesting how people have different goals when it comes to sewing, when it comes to historical sewing and history bounding. Like for me, sometimes I will sew things on my machine and I'll do it as fast as possible because I want that thing to be done. Other times I will do things almost, almost original practice and I'm sure we've all thought about this a lot but the concept of historical accuracy is kind of a myth because you can never have the same thread, the same fabric, the same fiber exactly. I mean, my thread is natural fiber, but it was probably made by a machine, so was the fabric. Like, it's just, it's not the same and it's never going to be the same as it was in history, but as far as what is accessible to me and doing the closest thing that I could have done to being historically accurate, I kind of did here, but I also decided to shorten it because I knew that was what would fit into my life and into my wardrobe and my goal is not to create the most historically accurate and and perfectly like historical out of a painting kind of pieces my goal is to make pieces that i enjoy and that fit into my life and i think i did that here
would like to watch my last video where I took a walk in these gorgeous icy woods. It will be linked right over here, and I will see you next time. Bye!